In this video, I'm going to cover mouse events, specifically the click, mouse over, and mouse out. Um, the general dynamics of a point and click game, so just really simple things like where an object is highlighted and made bigger, things like that. I'm also going to cover removing event listeners. We've done adding event listeners, but we haven't removed them yet, so this is where I'm going to show you how to do that. So I have a blank screen, uh, a blank scene here. And I have two images, a picture of my desk and a poorly um, photoshopped PNG of a Coke can. So what I'm going to do is I'm essentially going to put my desk image here and then the Coke can on top of it. So what I want to happen is I want to have the picture of my desk and then the Coke can in there so that it looks like it's part of the the picture. And I want it to um, highlight the can and make the can bigger every time I hover over it with my mouse. I'm also going to throw it into an inventory box. So the first thing I want to do is take this image and I want it to be my background image. So I'm going to name this layer first background and then I'm going to name this one object. I'm going to make this a little bigger just so we can see the frames a little better. Okay, so in the background layer I am going to drag and drop my desk image and to make sure that it perfectly lines up I'm just going to make its x value 0 and its y value 0. Okay, so now it's perfectly lined up. I made the stage already. I made sure it was the same size as this image so everything looked good. Okay, I'm also going to lock this layer so I can't mess with it anymore because I'm not going to do anything else with it. Now I'm going to place the can in the objects layer. Now it's a little too big, so I'm going to resize it. Now remember if you hold down shift it'll make it resize uniformly so that looks about right right there. Okay, put it right there. That looks pretty appropriate. Notice that this is a PNG file which allowed it to maintain its transparency so you can see the blue box shows you the actual size of the size of the image but the transparency is maintained so that you can actually see around it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this can graphic and I'm going to convert it to a symbol. So I do convert to symbol. I am going to name it Coke can. And I'm going to put the registration point here. The point in doing this is when I want to move it later into my inventory box. It's just easier. Um, depending on where your inventory box may be, you might want to change the registration point, but this is where I'm going to put it for this one. So I now have a movie clip, Coke can, in my library and you can see it's being used once. But I want to change this specific one, this specific instance of that movie clip, I want to call it Can1. I'm calling it Can1, so if I want to throw more cans in there later I can call them Can2, whatever. So what I want to happen is when I hover over this, I want it to glow. Okay. So right now, um, it's not going to do anything if I run my movie by pressing Control Enter. It's just going to, you know, look like a very poorly, you know, poor picture of my desk and a Coke can. Okay, can't do anything with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this movie clip here and you want to click on the little symbol next to it and notice we go from being in the scene to the Coke can. I'm going to add an extra layer and I'm going to move it down and I'm going to call this Glow. This one I can call Can or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Can. I'm going to lock this so that my can can't be affected and I'm going to go ahead and add another one and call it Actions. So I'm putting um, extra frames and code into the actual movie clip for the can. So what I'm going to do is add one more frame. Insert frame. 
and I'm going to add a blank keyframe in the glow. So these frames go all the way across, and I'll go ahead and add a blank keyframe here too. So the can should go all the way across, so the can will always be present. And then I'll have two different action frames so that I can have different actions on each one of these. And I'm going to have two different frames for the glow. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it so that this first frame, the can just looks normal, and then on the second frame, the can looks like it's glowing. So what I'm going to do is grab this green that I'm so fond of, and just a paintbrush, and make it a little bigger. And I'm just going to, oops, use the wrong color, it's this one. And I'm just going to kind of color behind it doesn't have to look terribly great right now so it looks pretty bad but anyways it it's highlighted you can go around and make it look better um, if you want as soon as the first frame it looks normal second frame it's glowy so I am going to put the actions stop on this frame and stop on this frame the reason I need to do that, and let me go ahead and delete it real quick so I can show you. If I don't do this, you're going to have a seizure looking at this thing. It just flashes um, between the two whether I do anything or not. So if I put the stop on each of those frames, now when I run it, it looks like it's supposed to. It doesn't do anything yet we haven't coded it. Okay. The other thing I want to do is label these frames so that I can reference them in my code. So I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to label this first frame standard because that's just what the code looks like normally. And I'm going to label this one glow. And you can see once I did that I get a little flag. Little flag means you have a label. Little a means you have code. Okay. So now what I want it to do is I want it to hover over, when I hover my mouse over this, I want it to go to the glow. So I'm going to go back to my stage, I'm going to add another layer, call it actions, and I'm going to put the code here. I want to make sure I get stop. Since this is a one frame, this is just going to be a one frame thing, I don't really need the stop here, but I'm going to go ahead and put it there anyways. I also want to do stage dot focus equals stage. What that does is it makes the stage be the focus. So since we're not really using keyboard events, it's kind of going to be kind of hard to tell. Um, but sometimes the mouse over won't work too well actually if you don't do it. Essentially like the when you have your little window here, it's any action you do it's automatically going to affect it. Instead of you having to first click into the window to select it, it'll automatically select the window. So remember, I called this instance can1. So I do cam1 dot add event listener mouse event mouse over make it glow. So what I want to do is when my can1, this can, has the mouse go over it, I want it to go to the function make it glow. So function make it glow event mouse event oh, void. Right? So I want this can to go to its glow frame. So I do can one I go to and stop glow. All right. So what it's going to do when I run it now is when I move my mouse over, it glows. However, that's not what I want it to do because I want it to stop glowing when my mouse isn't over it anymore. So I am going to add another uh, another function that will be instead of a mouse over, it'll be a mouse out function. So can one add event listener and actually 
instead of typing this, I'm just going to copy all of this. And I'm going to change this to mouse out. And I'm going to call this stop the glow. And let's copy and paste this to this function here. So it will be function stop the glow. And instead of going to the glow frame, I want it to go to the standard frame. Okay, so when the mouse is over it, it's going to glow. When the mouse leaves from over it, it's going to go to standard. So, boop, boop, boop. So it works. I want to make it do a few more complicated things. I also want to make it get a little bigger when my mouse is over it. So in this function, make it glow, I want to also have it affect its scale. So I'm going to also change the can1 scale x to 1.1. Essentially this works as a percentage. If it was 1, it would be 100% of its original size, the size that you have it placed. 1.1 is 110, so it'll grow by 10%. I want it to do it in the y direction and the x direction. Or, I'm sorry, the x direction, which I already have, but also in the y direction. So I need to also scale the y. Semicolon. So you can see it'll get bigger. But I need it to also get smaller when I move over, or I'm sorry, move my um, mouse away. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into the mouse out function and I'm going to make it go back to its original size by changing this to 1. So boop, boop, boop. Now I don't like how it kind of overlaps this keyboard, so I'm going to move it a little bit. Let's see how that looks now. Okay, that looks a lot better. So now when I hover over it, I can see that it's a selectable item because it gets bigger and it glows. Now, uh, it's not really selectable because I can't do anything with it when I click it. So what I want to do now is add an inventory box here so that when I click on this can, it'll go into the inventory box. I'm going to add an extra layer. I'll just call it inventory. And I'm going to draw a box with a black outline and make it white. I'm just going to draw it here. Okay. And then I'm going to add the text inventory just to be painfully obvious about what this is. It's very light. Let's change that to black and make it a little bigger. And just put it right here. Okay. So this isn't a terribly uh, sexy inventory box, but it works. So what I want to happen is when I click on this, this Coke can, I want it to no longer be on the stage. I want it to be up here in my inventory box. So I'm actually going to, this is the easiest way to make an inventory box, by far probably not the best way, or the sexiest way to do it, but I'm physically going to move this can to this position here. Now make sure that this inventory is underneath objects. Okay, That way when this can is moved here, let me show you, because right now if I try to move this can, it's behind the inventory box, but if I have inventory below it, when I move it, it stays there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and lock the inventory box, or the inventory layer, excuse me. Okay. So now what I want to happen is add another, um, now what I want to happen is when I click this, it goes here, so I'm going to add another function. Notice I have one for mouse over, I have one for mouse out, now I need one for mouse click. So can one, add event listener, mouse event, click, and I'll call it place in inventory. So let's name that, uh, let's define that function, place in inventory. 
an event, a mouse event. It's void because it doesn't return anything. I'm going to take the can and I'm going to make it standard. Uh, go to and stop standard. I want to do that so that after I click on it, it automatically um, stops glowing. Okay. And I want its position to be, I don't know, like 10, 10. Let's try 10, 10. So can 1, y can equal 10. Now I might have to fiddle with these. Let's just see what happens. Okay, that looks okay. 10, 10. So now notice it's still like is allowing me to hover over it and scan it, but it really shouldn't do that. It should be pretty disabled when it goes into the inventory. Okay, so now when you click it, it goes up here. So let's also make it smaller so that it'll actually fit in this inventory. So I'm going to do can1 scale x equals 0.5, so let's make it like 50% of the size. And can1 scale y equals 0.5. Now this is actually not going to work completely. So watch what happens. Whoopsie. It actually ruins my thing. Did I? Oh, let me fix that because that's not what I wanted you to see. When I click it, it didn't work. It didn't change. But if I keep clicking on it a bunch, you can see, oh, there it goes. Ah, like it wants to do it but it can't. The reason it's not doing it is because, you know, it, it does do it a little bit if you kind of spam it with clicking. It's because this function and this function are still working. It's still, you know, making it be size 1 when you don't have your mouse over it um, or 110 percent when the mouse is over it. So what I want to do is essentially disable these two functions when it's clicked. So I'm going to add here can1 remove event listener yeah. I cannot type today <laughs> jeez event listener man it's getting it's getting pretty bad event <laughs> there we go mouse events mouse over make it glow so I just removed that first one okay and since I'm sucking at typing I'm going to copy this one and paste it here and change this add to remove okay so now let's run it and see what happens now I can't click it, I can't do anything else to it. So uh, technically I can still click it, but by clicking it it's just staying exactly where it is. But the mouse over and everything don't work anymore. Now I want to point out that because I made the registration point right in this corner, that's essentially allowing me to figure out where it's going to be positioned here when I picked the CAN1. Okay, um, the can one's X and can one Y. Um, I made it 1010, so that meant it was like 10 pixels this way and 10 pixels this way, so like right here. Um, it's helpful to have the registration point there because it makes it kind of easy to um, place it. If the registration point had been in the middle, I would have had to use a much bigger um, numbers. So this is just a very simple way to do an inventory and you know the dyna dynamics of a point and click. Uh, depending on the size of this can, you might have needed to scale it or change these change these values a little bit more, but it worked okay for me in the first try. There are much more elegant ways of doing this, like using arrays and um, removing the, the actual can and things like that, um, but at this point I haven't shown those uh, skills, but I will show them in future videos.